Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a Vixen ED80SF, an 80mm f7.5 apochromatic refractor. The reason this is a brief review is because it is substantially the same as the Orion ED80 that I reviewed earlier. I'll put a link in the description below. So I actually have one of the Orions here, and you can see the familial resemblance. They're based pretty much on the same platform. So the Orion is sold as an optical tube only. From time to time they do package it with other accessories including mounts. Check Orion's website for details. But the bare tube sells for $499. So the Vixen comes as a complete package. It has a fitted hard carrying case, Vixen's distinctive flip mirror diagonal, although on this one it's been replaced by a conventional 2 inch diagonal, a finder, a bracket, rings, and a mounting plate. And for the first time in a very long time, I don't have to say it's a Vixen compatible plate, it is actually a real Vixen plate. That's what those look like. So this package sells for $749, and in the US at least, there is at least one other version of this telescope. It is the Skywatcher EVOSTAR 80. Now the Skywatcher is a similar package to this one, except it adds two eyepieces and it sells for around $825 at the time of filming. I'm often asked, are the upgrades worth it? Well, stepping back and looking at the three versions, at least the ones available here in the US right now, I have to say, yes, I think all three versions are fairly priced. I think you do get what you pay for. Which one you get may depend on how much stuff you already have. If you're an experienced astronomer and you already have many of the accessories, you can save yourself some money by just going with the Orion bare bones version. If you don't have some of these accessories, well, you don't want to go shopping for all this stuff. You get it all in one package. That's pretty good. Of all the accessories, the one that's hardest to pin a value on is the case. There are some astronomers, myself included I think here, who place a high value on any telescope that comes with its own fitted hard case. The reason being, you can ship it in the case, you can store it in the case, it stores neatly away, and it's the only accessory that you cannot buy separately. And here we have the unboxing. Got a fitted aluminum case. Scope inside, diagonal, and finder. Okay, so here we are with the two scopes side by side, the Vixen and the Orion, and I think they did a pretty good job of differentiating themselves cosmetically. But look closely and you'll see that they are actually pretty much the same telescope. It's the same platform. You see the hardware on the rings here is the same. The rings are actually the same. One's painted black and one's painted white. Vixen has their label on the side. This is the Vixen dovetail plate. This is a Vixen compatible plate. Here's the mounting block underneath this Orion ED80. I'm always cautioning people not to use that. It's not sturdy enough. It's held on by two screws here and I've had people tell me that they just remove that and plug the holes with, you know, screws themselves. And by the way, you can usually tell how much a telescope has been used by looking at the bite marks in the plate here. You can see this one's been used quite a bit. This one's been through a couple of owners. And I usually take that as a good sign. It means somebody liked it. This one hasn't been used quite so much. I've had people say, well, is it the same dew shield? It is actually the same length dew shield. But um, this one is just pulls off like this. And this one is a screw off. I won't screw this all the way off, but that actually is threaded on. So if we turn to the back end here, I just noticed, uh, well, no, normally, first of all, this would have Vixen's distinctive flip mirror diagonal. This one's been replaced by a conventional two inch diagonal and Orion, it's, uh, ironically, it's an Orion. But if we take these off, one other thing that I noticed is we turn these over like this, the focusers are very slightly different. The Orion has one lock knob and two tensioning Allen keys on the side. The Vixen has the lock knob here, but there's a push-pull three element bolt arrangement here. So you have a little bit more adjustment here. This one's missing the uh, rubber grips on the focuser. 
that's nothing to be concerned about. That happens a lot on these after about 10 years. So, and again, these are the same. The visual back comes off. Again, that piece looks like one piece. It's actually two. And they are actually the same draw tube. And this visual back here, you may be able to see it has set screws on it. So yes, it will mar whatever you put on it, but you can go to scope stuff and they will sell you a compression ring visual back. So there you go, differences between the two, pretty minor, but I know some of you care deeply about these things, so you came to the right place. So my opinion of these budget apochromats hasn't changed in almost 20 years. I've been recommending them for a very long time. I think they're terrific bargains. You get a taste of that apochromatic refractor magic without having to spend a small fortune. Very briefly, if you want to put this on a mount, the scope is small enough and light enough and has a short enough focal length, around 600 millimeters, that it can be used pretty much full time on a alt as manual tripod like this Vixen Porter that you see up in the corner here. I know people who use them this way. You can push it around and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Me, I prefer to stay, see this thing on an equatorial mount. I put it on a mid-size mount like my Celestron CG5 or my AVXs, and you've got the go-to function, you've got the computer capability, and at only eight pounds, it doesn't stress the mount very much. I also noted in my earlier review of the ED80 that this is an excellent platform for beginning astrophotographers. I used a field flattener that was supposedly built for the Evo Star 100, but it worked just fine and I was able to get these images that you see here. So I'm sometimes asked if I can tell the difference between the Orion, the Vixen, and the Skywatcher versions of this telescope. I can't say that I've seen enough samples of these to give a definitive answer yes or no. They all look really good to me. I've been recommending this model for a very long time. I can't really recall meeting anybody who said that they were unhappy with their purchase. We've had an excellent stretch of weather here in late March of 2021, and for several nights in a row, I had this one and the Orion side by side outside on identical mounts. I did send out this comparison of the moon that I took to several club members. These were taken with identical settings in sharp cap and processed the identical way in Registax, and they were taken minutes apart. I asked people for their opinions. A couple of the club members came back and said they thought the Vixen might be a little bit sharper and a little bit contrastier. Most of the other respondents came back and said that they saw no difference at all. I think I might be in that camp. If you do see any differences, I think you'd agree they are extremely minor. These images both look really good to me. So there you have it, a brief overview of the Vixen ED80SF apochromatic refractor. At the end of my Orion interview, I questioned only whether a three inch aperture telescope was enough to be your only telescope. Some people are gonna answer yes to that question. For me, I think I probably want something a little bit larger in the six to eight inch range to supplement this one. Whatever you choose is up to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.